Hello, everyone. My name is Eduardo Celeste, and I'm an assistant professor of law, technology, and innovation at the School of Law and Government of Dublin City University in Ireland. I'm extremely grateful to the editors of Diritti Comparati for inviting me to record this short blog in which I aim to comment on my a new book entitled Digital Constitutionalism, The Role of Internet Builds of Rights. So this, the book has been recently published by Routledge and is fully available open access. So let me start by saying a couple of words about the research question at the core of this book. So the book aims to um, analyze what the constitutional role of Internet Bills of Rights is. So Internet Bills of Rights are documents that aim to articulate constitutional rights and principles in the context of the digital age. And Internet Bills of Rights are usually uh, drafted by civil society actors and outside traditional institutionalized or political processes. And therefore, they usually don't have any legally binding value. But interestingly, they are uh, drafted using the language of constitutional law. So their, their theme, their topic, uh, their content relate to constitutional law. They try to imitate constitutional text uh, also from a language point of view. So in my research in this book, uh, what I've tried to explain is what is the constitutional role of these initiatives? So, um, I was originally, um, uh, this topic originally drew my attention because some years ago in Italy, there was an, is an initiative to uh, at parliamentary level to draft a declaration of internet rights. Uh, but then I discovered that actually there were dozens of other similar initiatives. So what they did was to collect all these texts and try to conduct a sort of like empirical research of these various documents. Uh, so my book is then structured in two parts. In the first part, I contextualize the phenomenon of the emergence of internet bills of rights, explaining that uh, current constitutional law is struggling to address the challenges of the digital revolution, but at the same time is not laying inert. We are witnessing uh, a new constitutional moment, a series of counteractions, normative counteractions are emerging uh, in order to um, address the challenges of the digital revolution and uh, uh, reach a new uh, state of equilibrium at constitutional level. Uh, there are a series of important uh, constitutional transformations that we are currently uh, witnessing. Um, a complex uh, process of constitutionalization of the digital society is ongoing. And they say complex because really this process is plural, is multi-level. Internet builds of rights only represent actually one of the ways in which this process of constitutionalization is, uh, um, is emerging, is being substantiated at constitutional level. Of course, there are more traditional ways of constitutionalizing uh, the, uh, the digital society, but the internet builds of rights also, and this is my main argument, play a role in this, in this process. And I also introduce uh, and explain uh, what is the role of what I call digital constitutionalism in this context. So uh, to me, digital constitutionalism is the ideology that is informing uh, and supporting the movement uh, that is leading to the emergence of internet uh, bills of rights. Digital constitutionalism doesn't advocate uh, for a a revolution of contemporary constitutionalism. It does not subvert the DNA uh, of our constitutional system, but it's rather an evolution of constitutional principles. And then in the second part of the book, I analyze the phenomenon of the emergence of internet bills of rights, starting from the uh, idea uh, of uh, drafting a constitution of the internet, what it means, what were the uh, the main um, um, sort of like ideas uh, that were um, promoted at academic level. 
And then I uh, study, I, I analyze this data set of internet bits of rights, in particular, looking at their uh, geographical scope, are their personal scope of application, are their content. And uh, eventually my main argument is that, of course, these texts do not have a legally binding value, but taken, analyzed all together, uh, they are an alarm sign for our constitutional ecosystem. They are essentially telling us that there are some areas that are suffering what they call a state of constitutional anemia. So there are parts of our constitutional ecosystem that cannot speak anymore to societal actors, uh, where essentially societal lymph does not circulate anymore. They cannot address the challenges of the digital revolution. And it's in this area that actually these documents are promoting innovative solutions. They, they have more freedom to experiment, to propose innovative uh, ideas, because of course they emerge outside the traditional uh, institutionalized or political processes. And in particular in the book, in the last part of the book, I explain what the message, what are the, the new principles that uh, these internet bills of rights uh, uh, are promoting. Some of the principles that are included in this document uh, are very similar uh, to existing constitutional principles, but others, uh, they do represent a, uh, the result of a work of, uh, of a process of uh, um, generalization and recontextualization uh, of uh, of core constitutional of core constitutional principles and eventually i argue that this is something that that we need and the, the ultimate role of internet bills of rights therefore uh, from a constitutional point of view is indeed uh, um, not that um, of, uh, for example, creating cosmopolitan constitutions uh, for the entire world, but is more actually to stimulate, uh, to uh, nourish uh, the, the ongoing conversation on how to draft uh, uh, constitutional principles uh, uh, for the digital society. So I see that I've reached seven minutes. So thank you so much for listening so far. And I look forward to engage to engaging with the community of the Riti Comparati on these compelling questions. Thank you very much.